Um, it is pouring rain. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Check this out. Uh, I am in an Airbnb in Cheyenne, Wyoming. But guess what? The news doesn't sleep. So I still wanna make a video because some really interesting stuff happened with SpaceX um, and some stuff that you can actually be an active participant with. But uh, yes, this is uh, me after driving two days straight. We are 20 hours deep into the drive, about nine and a half more hours to go tomorrow. I believe I can fly. There's been a lot of lightning. Um, so let me go back inside so you can hear me a little bit better. Oh my gosh. A guide to Cheyenne. See, proof that I am here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we are about to get some dinner. Of course, I'm repping the SpaceX hat. In fact, I've been wearing this hat so much, it makes me wonder if people actually think that I work for SpaceX, which, I mean, we hope it's a yes. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to go over some things and at least put a video out because I don't like being inconsistent with content on my channel. However, I am helping my sister move across the country right now. So my parents flew me into Portland, Oregon, and we have been driving, making our way to Columbia, Missouri. So first we've learned that now Starlink has approval from the US government to use Starlink on ships, planes, RVs, automobiles, and other moving vehicles. We all pretty much assumed that this would happen considering that Hawaiian Airlines signed a deal with SpaceX to bring this service on its planes by next year. Royal Caribbean is also talking about adding Starlink to its cruise line. So we figured that this would happen, but now we have official approval approval. So I just wanted to address that because there's another big headline that is actually causing quite some issues and uh, especially looking into the future uses for Starlink. We know that there are already hundreds of thousands of subscribers around the world with many more in line. So we have the residential customers. We know that some people are now using it in their RVs and now we'll have even more of a potential for corporate customers. So this is just expanding the customer base for Starlink, which we need to do in order for Starlink to succeed. Um, I have to just pause really quickly. This is um, a guest star in this episode. This is Otis. Otis, say hi to everyone. You guys are used to seeing my orange kitties. Uh, his tail is wet because he made a messy on the drive. Um, anyway, yeah, let's get back to the program. Now, traditionally, airlines, ships, and trains have relied on satellites in geosynchronous orbit. Those satellites are over 22,000 miles away, and these are provided by companies like Viasat. Starlink, of course, is taking a different approach by having their satellites put in low Earth orbit, and that, of course, results in lower latency for its service. Now, SpaceX has marketed its service directly to businesses, saying on its website, with more than double the antenna capability of Starlink, Starlink Business delivers faster internet speeds and higher throughput. The company states that it's $500 a month with a one-time hardware cost of $2,500. Which I gotta say, going on this road trip and driving through places in the middle of nowhere that have terrible service, I went to one of those uh, roadside little truck stops, a little food cart really, and they tried to use the swipe square, uh, the swipe credit card thing on their phone and they couldn't get any service and I didn't have any cash. Luckily my sister had cash, but they're telling me that this is a problem that they have every day is finding service to take money from customers. So they could really benefit from Starlink business. Now we know that Starlink has been issued for RVs. That is now $135 per month. I know that Dave Lee has used it and has liked it. I haven't had the privilege or opportunity to use it yet, but maybe at some point this summer, I will somehow work that into the schedule. And some people wonder, hey, when will we have this Starlink internet rolled out into our Teslas? 
Well, Elon Musk said on Twitter last year that probably won't happen anytime soon. He said not connecting Tesla cars to Starlink as her terminal is much too big. This is for aircraft, ships, large trucks, and RVs. And this article on CNN says the FCC's decision also marks yet another chapter in an ongoing battle over spectrum rights. Spectrum refers to a range of radio frequencies and federal regulators closely guard what companies are allowed to use which frequencies so that signals don't interfere with one another. Companies including Viasat, Dish Network, and wireless company RS Access petitioned against the FCC's decision. And this brings me to my second headline that I want to talk with you. SpaceX is currently in a heated battle with Dish and other 5G providers. Now this battle is over radio frequencies, which SpaceX says it obviously needs for Starlink, but Dish says they want it for their customers. SpaceX is claiming that if federal regulators allow 5G wireless networks to use a certain band of spectrum, it can cause widespread outages for its Starlink internet customers. In a statement, SpaceX targeted Dish Network, which though primarily known as a satellite TV company, also has a cellular network. SpaceX claims that Dish has attempted to mislead the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, which allocates spectrum use across telecom companies and put forward a faulty analysis in an attempt to prove that allowing Dish to expand its 5G network would not impact Starlink users. Of course, reporters tried to reach out to Dish for a comment and they said the following, that its expert engineers are evaluating SpaceX's claims in the filing. So what are they fighting over? Well, a 12 gigahertz band. This is just a portion of radio frequencies that are primarily used for services like Starlink or OneWeb. SpaceX's senior director of satellite policy, David Goldstein, writes that no reasonable engineer could believe the studies put forward by DISH and its allies. He also urges the FCC to investigate whether the DISH network and RS Access, another wireless provider, filed intentionally misleading reports. So yes, Dishy McFlatface is apparently being threatened by DISH. In fact, today, what I'm talking about is the issue that's going on with Starlink and the dangers and the fears we have of the future uh, as YouTube content creators or anybody who actually uses Starlink. And apparently Starlink, yeah, they're concerned about this. They sent an email to their customers and thank you for Osnet13 for forwarding me this email, bringing it to my attention. They want you to act to basically save Dishy McFlatface. Check this out. The subject states, don't let Dish disable your internet. Starlink writes, today we ask for your support in ending a lobbying campaign that threatens to make Starlink unusable for you and the vast majority of our American customers. As recently reported, Dish Network has been hoarding Spectrum for years as a strategy for preventing open and fair competition. Most recently, Dish has been attempting to claim new rights to the 12 gigahertz band, which is the Spectrum you currently use to download content with Starlink. Despite technical studies dating back as far as 2016 that refute the basis of their claims, Dish has employed paid lobbyists who are attempting to mislead the FCC with faulty analysis in hopes of obscuring the truth. Now, in reality, if Dish gets their way, Starlink customers will experience harmful interference more than 77% of the time and total outage of service 74% of the time, rendering Starlink unusable for most Americans. The FCC and your members of Congress have the power to stop this effort, but they need to hear from you. And even in this email, you can see, you can click here to ask the FCC and its members of Congress to put an end to this threat. So as you can see, yes, there is a section that you can fill out your name and information and make your voice heard. Yes, Starlink wants you. So I wanna know from you guys, do you agree with Starlink in that Dish has been hoarding this spectrum for years and that this has prevented fair competition? Is this something that maybe you've already filled out the form and you are fighting for? Because obviously if those numbers are true, then that is looking really bad for the future of Starlink for its customers. That is quite a lot of outage time and almost seems like, yeah, it would be rendered pretty useless. So I wanna know from you guys in the comments how much you've been following this, but again, sorry for the uh, 
different uh, background. You're going to see probably a couple different types of backgrounds in my videos here in the next few days because I am traveling, but that doesn't mean I have forgotten about you guys. So thank you so much again for checking out Ellie in Space. If you liked this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up because that helps the YouTube algorithm. They like to see that and then they push the video out to more people. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to Ellie in Space. A big thank you to all of the new Patreon subscribers. It has been so awesome to see more people pouring in their support and I really appreciate it. So I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you in the next video.